Hello there everyone, the Andrade here, and welcome back to episode 3 of our FTB Stoneblock 3 uh, Let's Play series, where today we are working on getting our uh, washing, our ore washing set up going, gravel washing really, uh, and automating the production of gravel with our uh, iron hammer, auto hammer. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Mic test, mic test, one, two, one, two, mic test, one, two, one, two. Welcome back, my friends, to another wonderful day, night thing here in the world of the Andrada. We can find out. Is it daytime? It is currently, uh, I always forget where to find, whether it's day or nighttime. Where's the time? Okay, honestly, I have no idea. It's 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 time. <laughs> I don't even know why I pulled this up. I can't ever remember if it's day or nighttime. I can't. I don't remember wherever to look. Okay, bye. See you later. That was embarrassing. Okay, let's move on. Uh, anyway, hey, hello, hi, how are you? Uh, today we are going to continue working on uh, all of the stuff and all of the things that we have been working on, uh, which is well, FTB Stone Block Three stuff. So in between episodes, uh, I don't know what I did because I did a little bit of work, uh, some prep work here for our washing station so we can wash our ores. See, we had that set up, moved our furnaces. Uh, we have our storage wall. I'm pretty sure I had that last episode. Um, I did collect a reward and or no, I found a loot bee and the loot bee gave me a dripper. So that's great. Uh, the way that the dripper works is you just fill it up with water. It can hold four buckets worth of water and then you put a block below it right now specifically we're using dirt and if we place dirt below it over time eventually it will uh, transform into clay and it gets us clay so i did that and i've gotten us some clay uh, that we have smelted down into some terracotta which is great i've also been working on processing some gravel and everything as you can see my hammer i haven't been using my iron hammer too much i've been kind of saving it um but i've been using just regular stone hammers and busting through them and hey look there we go clay convert it over it, it it's variable how long it takes sometimes it takes a while sometimes it's very fast uh I, i've had some take like five minutes to convert and i've had some take like two minutes to convert like it's extremely variable uh on how long it takes how many ticks it's going to take for it to actually do the conversion process uh, but that's how the dripper works and then if we look at the dripper um we can look at the usage of it and you can see there's quite a few things we looked at this last episode uh but like we can convert cobblestone over to gravel directly just with water um we can convert compressed stone over to iron ore which is cool we have diamond ore but that's a 3x compressed stone uh, eventually we'd be able to do something like that, which would be cool. But um, yeah, basically dripping to convert stuff over. Maybe I should drip some lava and get some magma blocks glowing, going, but uh, we'll see if that, you know, if we end up needing it. <clears throat> also been processing uh, the iron that we've been getting out of our gravel and everything. So we currently have a little bit over a stack of iron. Uh, I also have some smooth stone somewhere around here. I smelted some of that up and then we have just a little bit of glass and all that. So uh, first things first that I want to take care of today, let's go ahead and get ourselves a uh, hopper botany pot. The reason being is because I want to um, I want to be able to make uh, or just have my wood being passive. So I just want to get that going. Uh, do I have any chests available to me? It does not seem to be the case that I do. So let's go ahead and grab some planks. Um, let's just make a good old stack of chests or not a stack, but a but a good old eight pack. Or wait, those are planks. Never mind. A one pack. Sure. Uh, so let's get our hopper botany pot, make our hopper. And then we can go ahead and uh, make the hopper botany pot. And I just realized the recipe for this. Oh, that's two logs. OK, I thought that was two wood. I'm like, oh, that's cheaper overall. But no, it's not. It's the exact same thing. But anyway, we have a hopper botany pot along with this hopper botany pot. I want to go ahead and make ourselves a drawer so that we can uh, fit all of the things inside of there. So we need to actually get ourselves four total chests. Uh, and I'm going specifically with the two by two drawer because the hopper botany pot can um, we're going to make uh, oak, right? We're going to plant oak saplings in here and it's going to make saplings. It's going to make sticks. It's going to make oh, uh, logs and it's going to make apples. So we kind of need a little bit of uh, room for everything. So let's grab ourselves an oak sapling. I'm also going to need a piece of dirt and we're going to bring that with us because i'm going to show you guys what i've worked on in between episodes uh so through some eggs we got a chicken i'm hope i'm waiting for some uh, passive mobs to spawn around here and see what we can get uh 
we'll see what ends up showing up. I'd like to get some cows and stuff so I can get leather so I can start working on getting a backpack. That would be fantastic. Um, but if we pop down here, I just cleared out a little uh, stairwell and then we have a little nice farm down here because I've been uh, needing some food. So, yeah, we have a nice farm going for us. Just a seven by seven. Nothing too fancy. Uh, so we have potatoes, we have beets and we have uh, wheat. I also have industrial hemp down here, but it's not growing. And I don't know what's up with this. I don't know. Is it a light level thing? Uh, does this require because like right now we're sitting at uh, nine Light, does it need to be like more? Like if I put this torch right here, we are at 14. And at this block, we're at 13. No, we're at 12 now. Now we're at, yeah, we're at 12 on this block. So like, I don't know. I don't know what industrial hemp needs. Does uh, does it need, I think the sun is 15 light level and that's the only way to get to the 15. Does industrial hemp require a light level of 15? I, I, I don't know, maybe, possibly. Well, I guess we'll find out if that maybe works. Um, but this has not grown at all, like period. Anyway, what I wanted to do was take this uh, this drawer. We're going to bring it down here with our body pot because it's kind of our farm area. Uh, I'm just letting it sit down here, be infinitely expandable as needed. So we can always just, you know, make it bigger. We could go layered if we wanted to. We could have another room of just botany pots that are hopping and doing their thing. So uh, we're going to take our botany pot here. We can open up the UI by right clicking on it or we can shift or yeah, shift click our items. No, I guess we can't shift click our items in anymore unless I can have to do it from the top. No. OK, it has a UI, uh, but we're just going to go ahead and take that and we're going to take our oak sapling and you're going to see the sapling is growing. It's very slow. It's not the fastest thing in the world. As far as I know, if I put a torch nearby, it does grow a little bit faster. Um, but yeah, it's just going to grow and then the items are going to end up in that drawer and it's infinite growth of our um, tree. So we don't have to worry about it. Uh, so that's that area. And then over on this side of our base uh, chicken. Hey, another chicken uh, over on this side of the base. I made some ladders and I dug up because I needed to get some andesite. So I dug up to the uh, Y level for andesite, which is 55 at a minimum. I think I'm up on like 59. So that way it's just solid andesite. But yeah, so we just have solid andesite here. And then I just dug out until my hammer broke and got us a bunch of andesite. Literally, that's all that this is. If we keep going up, eventually we'll get to deep slate. So this will just, you know, we'll get another layer up top eventually or another level. And we'll get deep slate going so we can have, well, deep slate, you know. So that's that. And I'm pretty sure that's all that I worked on in between episodes here, uh, other than just, you know, resource gathering and and processing and all of that stuff. I didn't do anything else too super duper crazy here. Uh, let's go ahead and drop off the extra stuff that we have now. Uh, so wheat seeds, you go back here, beetroot seeds, potatoes are eventually what I'm going to end up eating. Uh, but right now we're eating beetroot because, well, we have it. So today, what I want to work on, first things first, I want to collect all our random rewards, right? Because we've we've gotten quite a few, and uh, we, maybe some of these rewards will help us out. Maybe we'll get some really good stuff. So let's go ahead and collect our rewards. We've also opened up quite a lot more of our pack. Um, I picked up my construction wand. Oh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this. I swapped all this out for dirt. Yeah, this is grass blocks, so that passive mobs can spawn. It was the moss blocks, so I left the moss blocks on the corners and stuff, but I swapped all the ground out for grass so that you know passive mobs can start spawning in here uh chicken please don't come inside my house i need to get a uh, pressure plate or something uh anyway to help me with that i made another or yeah i made another construction wand so that i could you know place those blocks so we have that quest line done uh, immersive engineering we had the hammer because we had to make plates and then power we've unlocked because we gotten free batteries we didn't do anything with it but we got them. Project E is in the pack where we can make a uh, transmutation table. I have never used Project E in my life, so I have no idea how this thing works. Uh, but as far as I know, we shove items into this and it gives us EMC and then we can duplicate and create other items out. Transmutation, just like a uh, full metal alchemist. Pretty cool idea and everything. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and click the button and let's see what we end up getting from this. We got a netherite furnace and see, this is why I love random rewards that we got a netherite furnace just right out the bat. Bam. Like that's a super fast furnace. And y'all know me. I hate waiting for things. And so having a netherite furnace just out of the blue, bam, everything's going to smelt so fast. Perfect. Uh, we got some chain mail so we can clip that. That's great. Uh, engineer's manual. Yay. 
uh, regular furnace we already had. We got some blaze mesh, which is cool. We got a crafter. We got two ender tanks. That'll come in handy at some point for like water and stuff movement. And site casings. We got flux plugs. Doesn't help us without flux points, but we have them. A hovering hourglass. Isn't this a timer? Four more chance cubes. And we got an, an, an hearthstone. A hearthstone. Teleports a player to their personal spawn point or if enabled, the world spawn. Which is cool, but at the same time, we uh, we have, you know, slash home available to us. What is this gadgets without grind, by the way? Gadgets against grind. Sorry. OK. Do I like it wants the space, but I can't put a space anyway. OK, gadgets against grind uh, temporal pouch. That's the time in a bottle. Uh, we have the hearthstone. We have the no solicitor sign wards off uh, wandering traders. Actually, you know, this would be pretty good to make. As far as I know, the wandering traders are bugged right now. When they spawn in, they clear out a three by three like square in your base area and everything, uh, which can cause mobs to spawn. So we can set up like no solicitor signs in places so that wandering traders don't actually end up spawning in, which would be kind of cool. Um, I feel like I feel like my audio, the game audio is acting funky. So I'm going to be right back. There we go. Maybe it was just me, but I was having a hard time hearing anything going on. It looked like it was working, but I turned it up a little bit for me. Uh, anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and shove all this stuff away into its respective chests, which is basically all this. Oh, we got a mending book, too, by the way. Uh, flux plugs, ender tanks, crafter, blaze mesh. The extra furnace can go in here. The hearthstone can go in here. Uh, and yeah. This is what I was talking about when I said that we have random events and everything and the book says that we have random events we can turn off. Mainly it's, I believe, the loot bees and these sticks that we get randomly. Um, and these sticks are quite annoying because they clog up your inventory because they have individual NBT data. Um, eh, mm, mm, I was going to say, I don't, do I really need to get the bee? But the bees have been quite helpful. It did get me that dripper, which helped me out quest wise. So let's go ahead and get this bee. Set him free. Okay, B. Get free. Hurry up. You're free. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Let's go. Get out of there. Okay. I guess I'll just stand right here as you give me my rewards because you've kind of... I don't want to smack you or anything. and You're kind of just chilling, so... Uh, more basic guy pipe upgrades, which are great. I like, you know, pipe upgrades are good and then turn into something good. Give me another crystal chest or something. That'd be great. Another dripper and some copper. That's all right. Okay. So there's our B friend. We got him. Those loot bees are pretty good. I don't know. Maybe as we progress through the pack, maybe they start getting better and better rewards or they just continue to be, uh, these basic level rewards, which is again, you know, it's fine. It doesn't hurt. Uh, and it does help us with progression and stuff a little bit, but it's not like overpowered helping us. Do I have chance cubes in here? Can I put those in there? Yes. All right. So let's empty out our rewards. But anyway, these sticks uh, are what's annoying. You can place them and then break them and they turn back into a regular stick. Uh, but they have NBT data. So that's where uh, it gets a little bit annoying because they can clog up your inventory. Maybe turn them off if I start getting really bothered by it. But for now, I think we're going to be OK. We will survive. So what do we need to do today? Uh, and well, that is continue with our quest line. So we are here, right? And our goal is to get uh, this process automated, right? We want to get crushing. Uh, we want to get gravel automated so we can have it automatically crushing, crushing, producing resources for us. We don't want to do all this manual work. So what I have set up over here is just a little bit of like a window and everything for our washers. That way we can have them chilling out in our base. And we're going to set up some uh, washers, uh, well, encased fans, and they're going to be doing washing for us. Us, and they're going to be doing other things too. Okay. So in case fans uses rotational force, creates an air current. If it passes through certain blocks like water, lava, or um, in this case, we can have soul sand lit on fire. It will haunt items. It will be used as a crafting mechanic. Water will wash items. Lava will blast items as if they were in a blast furnace. So it's like bulk smelting. And then haunting will haunt items to create a lot of the nether things that we're going to need. So we're going to want to get encased fans set up. That's our goal right now. So we need a couple things from create. So let's go ahead and pop over here. Let's try and find our shafts. We got those and site casings. We've luckily gotten quite a few from quests. So we're actually doing pretty darn good there. We're going to need our engineer's hammer. 
Now, andesite casings, if you were not lucky like I have been and gotten them from Quest, there's actually a fairly simple way to make these. So we're going to I'll demonstrate that for you now. We're going to use them so it's not like it's a waste of my time or anything. Um, but what we want to do is uh, our stone packs will should be able to do it. And we need to get our um, andesite alloy. And apparently I don't have that many. So let's just do we'll just do two as a demonstration since we have, you know, 12 casings sitting around. Can I make more andesite alloy? Absolutely. I have andesite now so it's not that big of an issue but uh anyway so to make andesite or to make andesite casings take your logs place them down strip the logs then take your andesite alloy and then right click on there and it will create andesite casings for you okay and the same thing applies for bronze casings when you get to that point uh use logs strip them and then put bronze ingots bronze ingots or bronze sheets i can't remember either way you put the bronze on there and it makes bronze casings okay uh, so let's go ahead we need to grab some of our iron and we need to make encased fans we're gonna need a total of three of these guys so we're gonna need 12 total um propellers uh and i think we're gonna need more than that because we need to get a mixer going because in order to get our um soul sand that we're gonna want for this we're gonna need a uh, a mixer which requires iron sheets as well so we have iron sheets then we can go ahead and we should actually have just enough to make all this right uh oh, except for the fact that i need to make the propellers and assign alloys and there's three propellers and three encased fans okay so now that we have our fans we can go ahead and place them down and hopefully they place the correct way and that one did that one did and that one did OK, so we have our fans placed. Now we need to get rotational power to them. It's going to be as simple. We're going to use a water wheel. Not going to be the fastest thing in the world to, to be using a water wheel for this, but I, it'll work well. Maybe maybe we can do some gearing up and maybe speed it up if we can get some uh, get some cogs and everything. So let's get some andesite. Let's get our zinc nuggets and get some more zinc going on. And let's make some andesite alloy. as much as we can with this. Yeah, we should be able to make 32. Perfect. That's a good amount. OK, so there's our andesite alloy. Now we need to get ourselves a water wheel. And that's going to require uh, some planks. Wait, I have planks on me. What am I missing then? I'm missing shafts. OK, so more andesite alloy. Then we're going to want water wheel. We're going to want uh, a couple of these. Let's do three, four of them. Let's get large cog wheels. I'm going to want at least two so we can try and speed this up. And then we're going to need some planks for slabs. OK, so there's a water wheel. So we have a water wheel. We have cog wheels. And hopefully we can use those to help speed this up. I'm also going to want to get myself some chain drives. Uh, that way I can power all of these water wheels without having to worry about um, belts or anything and getting into kelp. Uh, I did not intend to fall down here either. Now I have to build my way back out. So I'm going to need one, two, three, four, at least five chain drives. So it looks like I'm going to need some iron nuggets and then my andesite casing. And let's get chain drives going. What happened here? I don't know how I got two. OK. Give me all this stuff back and there we go. OK, so last thing that we need is some water. I think my buckets are over here, so I need a backpack so I can hold all this stuff. Uh, so we have our water. And let's go ahead and set this up. OK, so first things first, we need to get our um, water wheel down. So let's do that, but let's place it such that we can actually, you know, have it go sideways, just like we did before. There we go. OK, so that's going to sit there. Cobblestone's going to come over here and then our water is going to come here and that'll start getting rotation into this bad boy. And I realize now if I'm going to want to if I'm going to do the whole speeding up thing, this guy's going to have to be lower. OK, we're going to have to dig him down. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so if I'm going to speed this up using cogs i'm gonna need a gearbox too aren't i yeah let's go get a gearbox because we're gonna have to change the direction of our rotation here so let's get a gearbox we should be able to do that with ah, we need more cog wheels okay 
And it's going to require four to make one gearbox. Okay. And this guy's going to end up having to be a vertical gearbox. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's see how this works. Uh, get my fancy hammer that can dig three by three. Okay. So if I'm going to do this, let's go ahead. Let's set up the chain drives, right? We're going to want the chain drives here. Let's go ahead and add some light so you guys can see. We're going to want our chain drives to chill out and they're going to be sitting here. So that power is coming into all of them from one central source, right? Then we're going to get our gearbox and we'll have the vertical gearbox set up so that it can sit here. So power will come in from the bottom here. We'll have our small cog wheel sit off of here and then we can have a big cog wheel sit here. So I'm going to need to dig out just a little more and uh, place my torch again. I need more torches is what I need. I'm, I'm, I'm literally living off of one torch right now. OK, so then we take our large cog wheel and we place it. Sure, right there, which means our water wheel is going to have to sit right there. OK, so we need to clear out. This space. Not going to look the greatest, but it's all going to be hidden, so it's OK, because the way that these cogs have to be offset, it's it just looks a little funky, but that's OK. Uh, we can go ahead and place this here again, though, I'm going to need to I'll have to break this cog so I can. Jump and place the water wheel then place the cog wheel and there we go that should get rotation in problem being i hope our rotation is in the right direction also i can't i can't get where i need to go to get water into here but we'll make it work okay let's go ahead and fill all of this in so that way we just have a three by three space for that water we need to place this here and this here okay so that's going that's going Here's the problem now, though, our air, because I used a gearbox, is pulling. We need to reverse this. It needs to push, not pull. Hmm. Um. <clears throat> and chain drives can't change direction of rotation, can they? So we need to get another gearbox in here to change this rotation, which means that I have to I have to change this up because this cog wheel is going to have to come over here. OK, OK, let's get out of here. Let me go get another gearbox so we can rotate our or our uh, stuff uh, gearbox, which requires cog wheels, which requires shafts. And planks. And then another gearbox. Perfect. And we should be OK with this. I have shafts on me, right? I can I can run a shaft to this. So let's go ahead and break this and break this. Give me that. Also, we can go ahead and fill this in so that doesn't happen again. And then if we put our cog wheel here off of this side, we should then be able to put our vertical gearbox here and then we can put a regular gearbox here which turns our rotation back the direction that it needs to be, then our shaft, and now everything should be going the right way, right? I believe that it is. Okay, cool. So spit up a little bit, not crazy amount, like it's still not the fastest thing in the world, but it's it, it's going. It's running off of one water wheel and we're working, okay? That's what, that's what I wanted. Let's try and fill these holes in here a so we don't have as much of the sound of the water going and b so that we can uh you know make sure things don't spawn in or fall into there uh we can actually cover this with an andesite casing if we really wanted to bam and now it, it kind of blends in okay so there's that we have our fans they are blowing they are ready to do their thing let's go ahead and grab ourselves some slabs uh, and we'll just do stone slabs because it'll match the theming of what we have over there, which is stone, right? And if we take these slabs and we go ahead and place them down right here, it'll stop our uh, liquids or items from flowing. But if we take our water, which I don't have, take some water from here and we put it right here, bam. You now notice that the particles have changed to blue because it is now washing. The, the air is flowing through. Anything that gets dropped in there is going to get washed. For example, if we take gravel, and I don't think I have any gravel laying around because I've, I've 
broken it all down. I do have one. Uh, let's go ahead and get ourselves a stack of gravel going. So let's compress this. And then we can break it with our hammer. Uh, this hammer specifically. And sure, we're about to start having a bunch of this stuff, so it's okay. Okay, so now we have well, almost a stack of gravel, apparently. So if I take all of this and I were to throw it in there, you're going to see it get some a bubbly effect, right? The bubbly effect is what's important. That means it's going to start washing. I believe if I put a chest there, will it automatically put items in the chest? I'm not 100% on that, actually. Um, anyway, we'll let that do its thing while we work on getting ourselves uh, the rest of the stuff that we need, which is going to be lava so we can bulk smelt. Though now, really, I don't know if I really needed the bulk smelt because we got that andesite... Um, or that netherite furnace. I was doing this so I could just throw stacks of stuff and have free smelting without having to use coal. Really, now that I have the netherite furnace, though, that's going to be significantly faster for us. So it's not like a super duper big deal. But uh, hey, we'll do it. It's fine. OK, stone, fire plow. Lava, don't get cooked up chickens and let's throw an egg. No more chickens. OK, so we got two chickens. But now that we have lava, we can go over here. And we can put lava in here. And you're going to see that's going to turn red. Do not jump into that. It is hot. It is fire. But there we go. Look, we got we we cooked our gravel. Um, and I forgot because it doesn't because it's pushing you, it doesn't actually let you jump. Uh, but what we can do is put another slab here. And then that way, or maybe. Well. What if we put it no? because that's going to continue to push. Eh, something like this. Whatever. We'll just put that there. Ideally, we're going to figure out a way to get the items to go into a chest for us automatically so we don't have to deal with that. But look, we got diamonds. Uh, we also got lapis automatically. We got cinnabar. We have some amethyst shards, which is great. Emeralds, all kinds of goodies from this. Right now, what my goal, though, is what do I want? I want redstone. Where do we get redstone? Well, it is a washing process and it is a washing, washing process of dust. So all I want to do is go ahead, grab that stack of dust that I conveniently decided to make a long while ago. We're going to throw that in there and let that process. And while that's processing, we're going to work on our last washing material, which is going to be soul sand. How do we get soul sand? Well, it's not actually terribly too difficult to get. It is a mixing recipe from Create, which just requires sand, a mob soul and water. Mob soul is probably the hardest thing that I'm going to have to get because I haven't killed any mobs yet. But I think it's like an 80 percent chance for it to drop. And that includes when you kill passive mobs. So like, did we get one? No. Did we get one? No. Well. All right. We actually haven't had any mobs spawn at all. What I'm going to do is this. Let's darken this area up. And then I will, uh, you know, let's let's go ahead and oops. Wall this off so that nothing can come out. They can see us, but they're going to spawn down there. And then that way I can get mobs um, right now. I mean, soul sand is not super duper important for us at the moment, so I don't really need it. But let's go ahead and head our way all the way over here because my goal was to get redstone. That's what I wanted. Uh, and I did. I got 10 redstone. I forgot. I can't get out of here. I need to solve that problem. Put a ladder there or something. Um, anyway, so we got redstone. Let's go ahead and start sorting our inventory out. So we got sky slime crystal. We got that. Uh, flint counts as a gems and dust. Earth slime. We got amethyst, diamond, lapis, cinnabar. And we got redstone, which is what we were here for all along was the redstone. That's what I wanted. I'm going to try and clean up a little bit of inventory here. You can go there. And really what I should do is get another like chest or something for all my tools that way those can all chill in their own spot uh your mob drops which was all eggs at this point so i don't have anything else uh certus quartz you count as a plant item really you go there and torches can go here and food can go into my belly okay so there we go. That's uh, that's washing. And then again, for the for the fire that's smelting, all you have to do is just throw whatever you want. You can throw a stack of uh, iron there. You can throw some stone and it will automatically smelt that for you, which is great. Man, I need better food. OK, cool. So that took care of the encased fanning. 
and the water wheel. We do need to get soul sand, but I got to wait for mobs. So we'll wait until that'll probably be a next episode thing that we'll do. Um, but what I want to work on is getting this auto hammer. We should have the ability to make this now, now that we have our redstone, which will allow us to automatically start getting iron, which will allow us to automatically start getting uh, you know, gravel and all the stuff that we're going to need. So for this, we are going to need an iron hammer. We're going to need some glass and some gold. Luckily, I have some gold here. How do you get gold normally? It's a washing process. Um, right. Washing uh, to get raw gold. You wash sand to get gold. Luckily, our bees have helped us out. and We've gotten some of it, so we don't need to worry about it terribly too much right now. But we'll uh, we'll, we'll work with what we have with this. OK, so let's grab ourselves our stone rods. I think I put those over here for some reason instead of with my stone stuff. That would make sense. OK, so that's stone rods. Then we need to get ourselves a iron hammer. Then we just need to get our iron, our glass, and our redstone. Two redstone, and my glass is here. This is my smeltables. And bam, an iron auto hammer. Perfect. Interesting that that's not a quest. Hmm. Okay. Is it really not? Like anywhere? Passive resources? Nope. Nope. I guess not. I guess the uh, auto hammer is not a quest at all. Okay. Well, that's okay. Um, but what we can do now is take this. Uh, so we have our cobble gin here. We're gonna we're gonna steal this. Not that I couldn't make another one, but we'll just we'll take this one. This guy's full anyway. He can't hold anymore. Two thousand forty eight is the max that that's gonna be able to hold. So we're good to go there. But what I'm gonna do is we're gonna actually just pillar our way up here, um, and I'm gonna replace this chest. I need to go grab a drawer. Okay. Um, let's grab another drawer. Do I have any drawers floating around? No, but we can easily make a drawer if I have some chests on me or some planks. Okay. Drawer. Okay, I don't know why trapped chests show up first, but that's okay. Drawer and drawer and drawer. Okay. So now with this, we're going to be able to get our gravel going, automated gravel. Okay. So we have our drawer. And what I'm going to do, we're going to build ourselves up. Let's get a little a little staircase going. And we're going to set this drawer right here. OK, so gravel is going to go into this drawer automatically and then get shoot it out, um, shot out, shoot it out. And what we're going to do is set this up like so. So we have our iron auto hammer, right? And we're going to place this down and it does have input and output. Blue, I believe, is going to be the input, and then red on the other side is going to be the output. Um, it's kind of red and orange. And all we have to do is take our cobble gin, pop this bad boy here, and then this should start getting stone inside of it. Cobblestone inside of it as it generates. Yes, look, perfect. Cobblestone is being generated, pushed inside of the auto hammer. And then the auto hammer is automatically going to crush into gravel. And then it's going to get pulled into our millstone and then down into our chest down here, automatically processing and creating us resources infinitely. Ooh, ha, ha, ha. Uh, so ideally, we would end up getting a smart shoot here or something so that we can limit it so that we make sure that it's only doing, uh, you know, a certain amount at a time instead of because right now the the grindstone is processing one at a time, which isn't the most efficient in the world. We'll eventually get a back stuffing of stuff going on, but that's OK, because we now have literally infinite iron being processed. No weight, no or well, no, no manual work or anything like that. Iron coming in being processed we could even if we wanted to go ahead and throw a four by four drawer on this and now everything will automatically come into the drawer bam so there's our zinc we could have and iron and i think that's everything that go ends up in this drawer perfect and there we go automated perfect okay so that is uh, automated iron. We have an iron auto hammer. Uh, what I want to do is we're going to set up multiple of those hammers so that we can automate all of the resources that the hammer can make because the hammer can go from cobblestone all the way down to dust. And clearly what we need, we need to start working on getting sand and dust so that we can start washing these things automatically and start producing our resources automatically. So that way we can, you know, 
Not after weights. Uh, ideally, what I want to do is come down here and we should have some mobs that have spawned in. And I don't know why I didn't set up slabs here. So that way they can't see me and start shooting at me like this dude is. Bam, bam, and bam. Okay, there we go. Now I can kill these guys. And they can't see me, but I should be able to get some mob souls out of this. Get over here. And there we go. Perfect. And you, you can't see me. I got my mob soul, which means I'm now going to be able to make my mixer and get my soul sand. So we'll work on that next episode and get our haunting going uh, and then continue on our quest line. So we're, we're, we're getting close to finishing off our getting started quest line. Let's grab this reward. Uh, let's grab all the rewards. Actually, why not? We got a linking tool for drawers. That's cool. Uh, and then our next goal is really is to get crushing wheels. So that way we can crush items. The crushing wheels are used to make, uh, I believe we can get, um, if we crush gravel, we get even, we get different resources. That's where we get like osmium and stuff like that, I believe. Um, anyway. That's where we're at. So if you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate it, and it really does help out the channel. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one. Have a good one.